Kutli, I'm a child of the ghetto. CJ, I'm the child of the ghetto. DNJ, I'm a child of the ghetto. Cassian, I'm a child of the ghetto. Come! Um, an alternative soul um, is the EP. I've been working on it for about, say, since last February, um, 2011, February 2011. Um, just working on a bunch of tracks. Um, coming on a new kind of style from the stuff I was doing uh, the previous years. I was doing a lot of electro kind of stuff, um, and tracks out with Wiley. And I, the music I was making was more orientated for the club, for that kind of scene. Um, but I found out I was making a lot of the same kind of kind of songs, and to me it was getting boring. I wasn't pushing myself musically, um, so I just started producing myself. Um, and the music that I was making, or the, the stuff that I was writing, um, required me to sing more over the beats I was making, so um, the stuff that was coming out was then very natural in terms of situations that I've been going through, whether that be relationship, the general struggles that we've got outside on a daily basis. Um, and an alternative soul is what came from about that, you know, I'm mixing a bunch of different genres um, on tracks like Be Like You, you know, I've got the um, drum and bass drums, a little bit of dubstep on the bass line, you know, old school, old school things going on, so um, with then the soul element, and that's why one of the reasons as well why I would class it as an alternative soul, you know, it's soul music with a different kind of edge on it. So. <laughs> Pressure was it more so coming from what I felt I could make in terms of, you know, stepping away from the dance kind of stuff. But it was more a case of how would it be perceived? Because it was easy to make the songs, it was more easy to make the, the soul kind of stuff than it was the electro. I felt I had to think more about, you know, the different elements of, you know, where the drops are. Um, lyrically, what I'm going to be saying that is going to make people want to care a little bit lyrically because I don't want to just write a load of rubbish on the track about going and drinking in a club, you know what I mean? Which I was doing. Um, so it was more a case of how will it be perceived by the people who have supported my music before from my early mixtapes. Um, but you know, it was really well well presented, or really well uh, received in terms of like looking at me. I think people really um, connected with the storyline of that song, which is basically you know one of those situations where you're walking down the street, you're looking at someone, they're looking at you, but they're with their partner, so they shouldn't really be looking. And if they are looking, like what what is it? So you know that song, what are you looking at me for? Um, that was the first track I put out with this new kind of sound and people really embraced it. Came out in the summertime, so I think that helped a lot. You know, it's a kind of summer vibe track. So, um, and from there, people have just been supporting the, the music that I've been putting out. So, it's cool, I don't feel any pressures at the moment. You don't wanna drink, you don't wanna talk, you don't wanna make, you don't wanna walk, what you're looking in. There's difficulties, but it's one of those things I think is, is it has pros and it, and it has its cons as well, do you know what I mean? I think being outside of London, I do get to have that, you know, that angle where I can come in London, see what's going on, do my thing, and then go out and be in my creative zone that's not within the hustle and bustle of London, do you know what I mean? I can go and get into my own space. Liverpool is quite, um, very much more relaxed when it comes to in comparison to London, so I do like having that, that balance. And but at the same time, you know, London, there's so much going on, you know, every day of the week you can find like an open mic or you can be at such and such a place. Like last night we went to, just on the off chance, we went to a show in a Paradise Club in, in West North, I think it's South Kilburn. And you know, there was like Donny in there, there was um, Mark Morrison, a bunch of different people from different labels, you know, and on an average night in Liverpool you ain't gonna find no one like that, do you know what I mean? So just that, just having those type of opportunities just right there on, on a whim. It's great being here, you know, so yeah, it's, it's a pros and cons. Radio play um, for myself as an artist is important just because, you know, it's that demographic. For me, any play is, is important, you know what I mean? That's that's what it, what it is at the end of the day. Um, and being that it's on playlist, just, you know, just gives it that, that many more spins, you know, and that, that many more ears that are able to listen to you. Um, but obviously the internet is one of those things where you don't necessarily have to be playlisted um, to be able to reach uh, people who support your music or people that are interested in your music. Um, but at the same time, it's a great thing. And one extra, of, you know, they've supported me from way back in the day with like people like Ras Kwame, um, who was the first person to play me on one extra, to like the likes of now um, Trevor Nelson and um, Westwood and Ronnie Harrell who've been supporting like Madness on so uh, it's a great look one. Well, the rapper and singing thing, like, 
I was always a singer before I was a rapper, do you know what I mean? But, but everybody says the same thing, do you know what I mean? Because I suppose the majority of stuff that was coming out was, was the rap stuff, but you know, I was always singing my own hooks, even on those early early tracks. Um, and obviously, I was, I was singing way, way before I was rapper, man. But um, yeah, that's just kind of, of a thing that's just I've just developed with, and at the moment when I'm making music and I'm sitting down, I'm not trying to go down and say, I want to write a singing track um, about love, or I want to write a hip hop track about all the bullshit that's going on, do you know what I mean? I just sit down and just, whatever, wherever the beat takes me or the vibe takes me, I just roll with. Um, and it just so happens that everything that I've been putting out or making at the moment has been, you know, singing the, the soft tones and different bits of that. And lyrically, I'm finding it easier to write better songs, being that I'm singing the tracks and stuff like that. So I'm just vibing with that and just really seeing where that goes at the moment. Being the one extra, one of one extra's hot for 2012, and that's just another platform as well, you know. And like I said, they've really been supporting me, and that's just another level of, of showing how much love they, they give me at the moment. And it's a great feeling to be supported and to be looked on as like one of the people who potentially can push music forward for 2012 and push it in the next year, and then, you know, take take it to a different level. So, and if you look at some of the other artists who are on that list as well, like Frank Ocean's. Um, Easy Lay Banks artists who are really doing amazing things at the moment. Um, I'm just hoping that as the year progresses, I can, you know, reach those same kind of heights with, with my music and the stuff I'm putting out. And so. The old man asked the boy, what's he fighting for? Cause he's looking like a rebel that's without a cause. The concept of the song, um, well, I wrote it just after the, you know, the riots was going on. We had our little riots in Liverpool as well, like on the end of the road from where the studio was. Um, so, I guess the first version of the old man asked the boy, "What's he fighting for?" Because he's looking like a rebel that's without a cause. I think that's one of the main problems that people were having with the riots. You know, they're seeing him like all the, the youngsters are looting. But, what seemed like no no reason, but obviously there's got to be a reason because they would not be living in the first place, or there's got to be something that caused that to happen, and that's what I meant with that line, and that's how that whole kind of song just came about, and I just vibed, and with the second verse just linked into a different type of struggle that you know that we're facing, which is you know abuse within the home, whoever whoever may relate to that within their life. Um, and with shooting the video, it was a case of, you know, we just shot the Be Like You video in, in West London, and we kind of wanted to take it to a different level. You know, I think a song called Child of the Girl, you might assume we're going to shoot it in a council estate in, in some part of London, do you know what I mean? That looks kind of gritty, kind of edgy. But we wanted to just open it up and just take it to a totally different level. And I think going to St. Lucia and shooting the video over there, I think we really, really got what we were trying to get with that. And we shot that on, on a budget of basically flight money, you know what I mean? When we got over there, we didn't have no actors ready. We didn't have no locations. We just had the video cameras. And, and from playing the music to different people around the area, and they were feeling the vibe, they were connecting with the music. You know, I'm talking about the same struggle that, that they have over there, you know, the child of the ghetto. These people live in the ghetto, so they instantly connected with it. Um, and they just reached out and showed love, and we, they allowed us to go into their homes, you know, people over there would say, oh, let me be this character, you know, and that's how we came about. I think, I mean, I, I hope we pulled it off, you know. And, you know, I, I don't know, stuff like that, I try not to, think about too much like how do I remain hot because I think well really I just have to make the music that is true to me and not very too far from that do you know what I mean and hopefully what's working now in terms of people connecting to the songwriting I think if I'm writing songs that still connect to people 10 years later then the relevance should stay you know what I mean as long as I'm making music that it's real to me and it's and it is real and you can identify with being real music like you know Cove's not he's not talking about you know popping champagne and that and he's blatantly not doing it, you know what I mean? So, as long as I'm being true to myself and the music, and people are late, then I'll, hopefully I'll be good, you know what I mean? We'll see, we never know, we never know. In my iPod, um, at the moment, I'm listening to Common, and um, I've got some rattling on there, um, Erica Badu, and who else I'm listening to? Uh, what's the guy? There's a guy from States called, uh, I forgot his name, if I look on my phone, I can tell you the guy, but he's sick, so if you're on the phone, he's over there. Okay, yeah, that's it. There's a bunch of different, uh, Terry Walker as well. Yeah. 
I've been listening to some of their new stuff that she's yet to put out, and like, some it's, it's great, you know what I mean? I've got a couple of little exclusives there, and that's so, yeah, man, I'm just banging on kind of stuff. Definitely have a bit of respect for the craft, like the way you're saying, like, just come on, I just want to be a musician. I don't think it's as simple as doing that. I think you do kind of have to treat it as, a, as an art form, which is what it is, you know, kind of research about, you know, if you want to make beats, don't just jump to the community, da, da, da. like research a little bit about different producers and different techniques they use that, you know, maybe helps them create a beat quicker or, you know, the different things when you're EQing, just different little tricks, like read up about that, because that will help you. Like a lot of times, that's how I learn my stuff, is, you know, checking what different artists do and building it like that, you know, seeing how you can put your own stamp on it and tweak it to how you, how, how it represents you best. Um, you know, don't be afraid of like criticism, you know, just try and look at it as best as constructive criticism and see how you can take that on and, and move forward and don't never roll with a chip on your shoulder when it comes to people giving you criticism about your music because at the end of the day, it's always going to be opinion. Each person is going to have a totally different person opinion from the next person. And, yeah, man, I'm just trying to make it, make it take you to the next level and just be, be true to this yourself and make the music that you enjoy making because it's gonna be fun. If it's not fun for you making music or going to studio, it's not fun. You know yourself like doing editing and video and stuff like that. If it's not fun for you to do it or you're not excited by it, there's really no point in doing it and you won't get the best out of it as well. So um, for the rest of this year, um, I'm just working on finishing off the album. So I'm trying to work with a bunch of different producers who have been showing love since checking out the Al an alternative soul and some of the other records like Child of the Ghetto. Um, so I'm, I'm in the studio with Deneo um, real soon. I'm trying to get MJ Cole on the track. I think we could do a nice little summer kind of soul mix with some old school garage kind of. What's that track? Yeah, the Be Sincere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That old school one, like something like that. Yeah, that crazy. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? So I'd love to do something like that. I think um, the vocal tones that I'm using with the music I'm making would would fit that perfectly, you know what I mean? And, and with the sun, I'll, I don't know if I'm just gassed because <laughs> the sun's out. I just want to make pure summer tunes, you know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, man, the album will definitely be a lot more upbeat in, in comparison to an alternative soul. Um, and yeah, I'm just hoping to take the production value, the songwriting levels, everything, just up notches and notches and just keep doing it so I can have longevity, long as you say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could we get a cheeky little name for that one? Nah, I ain't got, no, yeah, nah, you know what, I'm, I'm playing with different things and you know, some people will just say things in conversation. Like one guy said um, yesterday, was it Refined Rebellion? Yes. Yeah. To me, that like that was kind of sick. He was just saying, it. we were just conversating about something totally different. He said Refined Rebellion. I was like, yeah, yeah maybe I'll have to use that, but you know, we'll see. But yeah, we'll see. I'm on Twitter, which is at Cove Music. My website is covemusic.com. YouTube is YouTube forward slash Cove Music. So everything's just, just a Cove Music thing. Man. Uh, Love, yeah.